Hardy, hello everyone. Thanks for sticking on board. I am uh, fortunate, as I said earlier in the day, that I've just joined, so I don't have the expertise. I'm so proud of my friends. Uh, you know, they glow when they talk about the communities that they live in and uh, and work for and represent and invite family, friends, and different groups to. So I'm uh, excited that people have stayed on board to listen. I would like to talk a little bit about our community. I'm going to experiment with you a little bit, and I'm going to try to time. Uh, I'm gonna to try to experiment and a share here. So uh, probably the best tool for people to use is, uh, uh, did that work? I think so. Your screen so sharing, like there I'm you sharing. go. Yeah, so we've this got, is our we've website. Got you, yeah. All right, so I have two screens. I think that's kind of creating a challenge for me. But so the, the website that we have, uh, the WatkinsGlenChamber.com is the current site we're using. If people are to come back in another month or so, they would see a different uh, configuration, uh, a little bit more friendlier use. Um, but we are partners with I Love New York. Uh, and uh, in addition to the people that are on the screen, many of them are that. You're looking at, the, at Seneca Lake from the uh, west side, the side closer. I believe the closer side to uh, Rochester coming down uh, on 14. It's uh, barely an hour and a half drive. As I mentioned, I do it every day. And uh, it's it's really quite lovely. I'm, I'm always surprised as a big city guy. I've lived in New York City, Chicago, and in Rochester most of my life uh, or throughout my life. And to come down and just immerse yourself in the agriculture, the vineyards, the lake, and just the lush green, and currently just the burgundies and golds of, of leaf peeping. I'm an official leaf peeper. Some of my colleagues may be also. Um, they actually are working on uh, sending pictures and stories to New York State so that we can keep this lovely map that many of you have seen on what's peak and what's not. We're just going to be at about peak at this coming weekend, so we're very fortunate. The lakes actually keep the trees and the grapevines uh, and corn stalks, all the things that have this color of leaf peeping, um, quite rich and cool. And, and so the, the warmth of the water actually extends uh, our uh, leaf peeping period and also is why grapes can stay on the vines, particularly the red grapes for uh, the over 40 wineries in the area. So we have different areas where to stay, things to do, eat and drink, the chamber information is about our 450 members. Most of them are tourism driven. And then some of the programs and resources that people have. So again, I encourage our viewers to look at watkinsglenchamber.com uh, and it will give you the details and more up to date than any of our print pieces. Although you can call and we'd be happy to send you a visitor's guide. Um, the where to stay I talked about earlier in the day and the different accommodations you'll see listed is certainly you've got the um, the bed and breakfast and cabins, camping, cottages, all of the more unique, intimate, smaller uh, type of lodging, uh, yurts I mentioned, glamping versus camping. Uh, we have all of that here and those 200 partners of ours that help people rest uh, and recharge for the next day or the week if they're coming for vacation, either waterside, lakeside. Um, when I say lakeside and lakefront here in Schuyler County, that could mean not only Seneca Lake, but it could also mean uh, Juanita Lake uh, or Lamoca. Uh, they're both smaller lakes and are lovely and have different personalities, uh, tend to be a little more rural uh, than the Seneca Lake. And although Seneca Lake is surrounded by the vineyards and distilleries and farms, um, the little communities along Seneca Lake change the feel a little bit. So a little bit of something for everyone. So I just like to mention the accommodations because you can find everything here and the Harbor Hotel is probably more infamous most recently as our full service for Diamond property with the Blue Point, Blue Point Grill uh, and the excellent uh, culinary treats that you get at the hotel. That's one of the Hart Hotels. The Hart Hotels exist uh, also in the Thousand Islands and in Chautauqua. So that might be of some familiar to you. On the next page, the, the things to see and do, I'm just briefly going to point that out. I think probably the middle picture is what we're known for, but the adrenaline pump of the racetrack, whether it's an actual racing event for NASCAR or Indy uh, or some of the uh, more vintage cars, there are also concerts and festivals. As a matter of fact, we'll have our 25th uh, wine festival coming up this uh, August, I'm sorry, this July. And so look for those dates. And, and though we had to cancel a number of events uh, at the track and in the community over the last uh, several months, particularly summer, uh, late spring, 
uh, we're anticipating uh, that next spring and summer, as all of us are hoping, we'll, we'll have a wonderful um, festival season. Uh, we all embrace our May 1st to November season. We talk a little bit about winter and I'll do that also here. But keep in mind that the racetrack is one of the biggest draws, although not the biggest draw. And the racetrack does offer public uh, drives around the track. And I think that's actually what brought a lot of people in this very unique summer. The outdoor activity is by far the, the number one reason people come. And I mentioned outdoor, but I, it's a big umbrella uh, when you talk about the outdoors. And one of those, um, one of those that I would mention, uh, and I hope that my screen has changed that, uh, the fall farm country. Farm country, Finger Lakes farm country is uh, part of the outdoors. So it's of course more man-made, more structured, but you have farms of all kinds of creative um, growing seasons and uh, unique products. Some of them are livestock. Um, we have two alpaca farms here <laughs> in Schuyler County, which is very unique and they're the cutest critters ever. And, the, and I'm allergic to wool, so I can't wear wool, but I can wear alpaca um, fiber. And so they're called fiber farms. Uh, we also have goats and sheep and cows, of course, and a number of creameries, significant number of creameries and a lot of ice cream and a lot of ice cream stores here. So if you're not lactose intolerant, uh, and you, you want to come our way, there's plenty of places to have ice cream all year round. I encourage you to go to the website, Finger Lakes Farm Country. We just finished our first Finger Lakes Farm Country uh, farm trail with 10 open house farmers, uh, farms opening their farms, two of the alpaca, some really wonderful fruit farms with great jellies and preserves and uh, teas and fruits and things that they make with all of the products that they make and, and or grow. Uh, we also have a wild mushroom, uh, wild woods or uh, uh, woodland mushroom farm where the mushrooms are actually grown on uh, in the forest uh, on bark in quantity. Um, they also do some glamping and camping. So it's kind of fun that you can actually stay at farms or um, and uh, other unique venues, but to stay on a farm and actually experience that is kind of a neat, unique to Skylar kind of feel. Watkins Glen and Skylar we use interchangeably. I will mention that uh, the farm, sanction, farm sanctuary is something that many people who are um, fond of uh, animals, livestock, and also protecting them and making sure that they're treated well. Um, know about Farm Sanctuary with over 800 adoptees that are taken care of at this facility. That facility has been closed this year, um, up to this year, up to this season. Um, although they're trying to ramp up and figure out their biggest priority was not visitors, but the, the reason people come to visit and that's animals that they're charged with taking care of lovingly and protectively. So they wanted to be careful with them. Uh, and so they did not open this year, uh, but it is part of that farm experience. Uh, and there are so many other cheese curds are a big deal here as well as ice cream. Uh, and of course, all of the products that you would buy during the fall, whether that's pumpkins and gourds of all kinds, mums, corn, et cetera. So I think a lot of us have talked about agriculture. You have to remember agriculture is the number one biggest industry in the state of New York. And so therefore many of those farmers have gotten very savvy. Um, with farming uh, and as a tourism attraction. So I hope that you'll enjoy that. I uh, want you to know that less of a hecticness of a tourism town and in a contrast, not in a bashing way is, so Lake George has that resort feel plus nature and um, New York City, obviously there's no place like it on earth. And then Binghamton has got that kind of blend of both but with a really nice sophistication of a small city just like Rochester. Um, Watkins Glen is very unique in the sense that we are very country, very slowed down. Although, you know, it's where mother nature meets Main Street because we have these little villages. We have Watkins Glen, we have Montour Falls, we have Hector and Bradford and uh, Odessa. And they, all these little towns have little Main Streets with great little shops and shopping, um, but their own little unique personalities. And you really do slow down here. A, a favorite saying, I have many of them and you're, you're subject to them because you're captivated on this or at least captive, um, is that, you know, take some time to get lost in the Finger Lakes. To really enjoy the Finger Lakes is you don't want to plan out an itinerary that doesn't allow you to stop at a, a roadside farm stand or into an antique store or into this cute uh, artist boutique or certainly to swing by for an ice cream or a glass of wine or, or maybe even a beer. Um, try our distillery, Finger Lakes Distillery here is, is award-winning and is a phenomenal facility as is Grist Iron Brewing. 
I worked at Corning Museum of Glass, which is one of our partners here, um, and the Curtis Museum as well. They're just over the border a little bit, but they're part of our cultural offerings. And I compare, after working at Corning Museum of Glass, I compare organizations to it, where you're kind of turning that corner and you're like, wow, what is this world-class facility doing in the middle of the country? Well, Corning Museum of Glass, make your own glass, and one of, if not the largest glass museums in the world. I contrast that, so grist iron brewing, and in, you turn the corner and this brewery is something that's hugely fantastic and still envelops the wonderful personality of the Finger Lakes. And you're like, I call it the CMOG of breweries. Well, not too far down the road on 414 on the east side of Seneca Lake is this CMOG of distilleries, the Finger Lakes Distilling Company and, and all of the wonderful uh, distilled and spirits that they make, sweeter wines and brandies and whiskeys and gins and such. Um, and, and it's just so impressive and you least expect it on some country road that's very well maintained, by the way. And again, as I mentioned, only an hour and a half from Rochester, barely on either side of the lake, depending on how you go from the north. So I would like to also um, try a video. <laughs> we'll see how that goes because we know how the volume is. So if I go here and I try to go to the share, my volume is on and I'm going to try this. We're good.
I actually picked the video to show you. <laughs> Oops, sorry about that. I actually picked the video to, um, because I like the music. It is an economic development video, but it shows you the, all the things that are going on here. Uh, quite a significant amount of money actually has gone into the community recently for infrastructure. So it's easy to drive down. It's lovely to come into town. There's this odd nautical feel in addition to the agriculture and the great outdoors with the national forest and the farming I've talked about, and, and certainly these wineries. Once again, I cannot overemphasize, please call ahead to any of the attractions, whether they're outdoor and or the wineries, because if you call ahead, you will most likely be gaining a very good VIP experience, particularly at the wineries, breweries, and distilleries. I, I hope that I've been helpful. I know I'm at the end of the day and I'm hoping that I can answer some more questions than talk at you, but I will let you know we have two visitor centers here, one at the state park and one here on uh, in downtown Watkins Glen, um, our small little uh, uh, Mayberry in the Finger Lakes, if you will. So I welcome you to come down and visit and I invite you to bring family and friends and workers. Uh, I am going to, I think, stop share or new share is what it's gonna let me do. So I'll just come on here with a little bit of a map. Um, I think it's gonna let me choose. And then I just wanna kind of end on the map here. Once again, where Mother Nature meets Main Street, you've got the park to the bottom, State Park. You've got the lakeside. And then if you were to come off the map a little bit, you'd come right into the National Forest. Uh, again, Rochester is up in the Northern part. Watkins Glen is the Southern part, that hour and a half drive. Montreux Falls is that other small village where you saw Hallmark Falls. Uh, and we have just an amazing area to come and visit uh, and, and probably the biggest draw right now, this time of year and into the winter, which is actually the best time to see the wineries is the Seneca Lake Wine Trail. So thank you for your attention. I'm happy to answer any questions. Well, Wonderful. thank you very Michael, much, that Michael. Was... Michael, that was, I'm sorry to mean to talk over you. Uh, uh, Laura, just wanted to That's thank something. Michael. That so, was great. I think Nadia is getting us up again here. There we go. Wonderful. Michael, that was a wonderful presentation. Thank you. I, I liked your graphics. The pictures were very, very, they just painted a beautiful picture of the, the region for us. Um, there are some questions that came you up. You have to love, you have to, Laura, you have to love a drone, right? <laughs> Drones are the way to sell it, Kern. Get you a know, drone. <laughs> Who knew, who knew five years ago we'd be using drones? I, I'm, it's amazing Everywhere. what our changes. Exactly. There are some questions that came up for you though. Um, regarding um, Watkins Glen, the gorge, uh, getting up and down, handicapped accessibility. Can you talk to us a little bit, a bit about that? People are wondering. Well, certainly what's nice is the renovation. I don't know the last time that you may have all been down. I hope you've been down. Um, what used to be the parking right next to the gorge is gone. Yeah. That's a beautiful park. And so you certainly uh, with a wheelchair can in, in access that part of it. So the, the very bottom access of the gorge to both the Indian trail to the north, which is normally where people come down these wider, very easily manageable steps with a slow pace. And then the stone stairs that many people are familiar with all made of slate and certainly that's why the the gorge doesn't open until later than sooner in April after it's been scaled which means the removal of any shale that may have loosened up during the winter mm. so that it's nice and safe uh, some of it mortared back up other of it removed so it doesn't fall on people while they're walking mm. through I did <laughs> I just did it I, I'm not the most athletic person I, I'm sorry to say but I did it in an hour and a half um, currently, for safety's sake, uh, and we didn't include any pictures with masks, but they're everywhere, both in our restaurants, on our streets, in our stores, um, and in the wineries in particular. But they did a one-way trail through the park, Laura, so that it would kind of help people social distance. And some of the stairs that you walk, well, most of the stairs are very wide. It's almost like a two-step two step stair, so that uh -huh. there aren't steep inclines, um, there are railings. You take your time. There are walls. Some of it's slippery, though. You do get wet. You know, it's kind of fun. Yeah. It's part of the experience. Even even with it, um, Judy had mentioned. You know, it was a dry it was a dry summer down here. Yeah. So my famous saying, and I said I said it earlier, is you know what's not canceled? Nature. <laughs> and I'm ready to go to that campaign with everyone because it, it doesn't even matter. But 
that's when our falls went dry <laughs> because the drought was so bad, but there was still a trickle, right? So you don't need this huge gush of water coming through. And actually I thought it was much more, it was much lovelier to see the rock formations yeah. and such, but it, it's very safe. It's very easily paced. Certainly you can't bring a wheelchair up. I right. saw a number of people using a cane, using canes and just taking yeah. their time. I was really proud of them. That's and, great. you know, I may have seen them going on the way back down and I was, and they weren't huffing or puffing. They were just taking their time. There's plenty of places to rest. There's no rush. It's not timed. Um, I think people of all ages uh, and all feet size would do it, do well. And if you have a chair or a walker, you can enjoy the public art and the nature and just the gorge itself right at the base. Can you, is there a parking lot? I, I, I this is from my own personal memory. Parking lot up sure. top, you can walk down, or is there a parking lot, and then you can take a shuttle up and just come down if you don't want to do the stairs? I mean, sure. going up there. Absolutely. Yeah, there is the shuttle. There's paid parking both on the lower uh, level as well as the top level where the pool is. The Olympic pool actually was a huge draw this year um, because it's what you least expect. There's a campground on the top, so you know camping is kind of the thing to do here, um, particularly at the state park. But the shuttle runs, the paid parking is still there. If you want to park closer, um, there's also, you know, on street parking. So some people park on the street, some people park closer and pay a little money. I also see a lot of people exchanging the parking ticket because it lasts pretty much half the day. And then people are gone usually an hour and a half or two hours and they'll give the ticket to someone else and they can enjoy it. I, I actually gave it to a, an Indian family that was here from New Jersey um, a couple of weeks ago when I drove over. Oh, but uh, yeah, the shuttle service, there are two ways to enter. Yeah. Okay, good. That's great. Um, there was another question. Um, I know you said that, of course, it's well known for the racing, but that's not all. But with the racetrack, um, someone has asked us if there, apparently a couple of years ago, there was a driving experience where people could take their own car onto the track. Are you familiar with that product? No, that existed. That actually is what we, where we got the traffic. We got that traffic uh, pun intended, I guess. We got <laughs> we got that car traffic all summer. There were a lot of the car clubs that come in. There are a lot of um, uh, independent family people that you can, there are periods of time you would call ahead and you'd find out what are the general public access to the track. And then you can pay that, uh, okay. that fee to drive through the track. It's, it's probably wow. was the most, was the only thing going on at the track this summer. Um, and so it worked out very well. We had a lot of car clubs here. Great, so people can still come on down, fantastic. Uh, Craig, do you have a couple of questions that you've come across? I do have, I do have a couple of questions. Um, along the lines of the uh, the racetrack, just to get that um, over with, it'd be for next year. Um, how, how far in advance can you get or should you be getting tickets for the NASCAR event? So I would, uh, they were very good at refunding uh, or, or repositioning tickets for the events that canceled from what I understood. I came in in July. So most of that had already started happening. Um, I would go on the, I would go on Watkins Glen International and, and start looking now. I believe the, fine, the wine festival tickets are open. Now I know that's not, although it may be race oriented because they've announced mm -hmm. that there's an Indy car race that's going to happen the same weekend as the 25th anniversary of the wine festival they're going to actually combine so the energy level that weekend is going to be crazy they're very very good uh craig at keeping their calendar of events posted pos uh, processes and procedures uh, in addition to covid and safety and that such in, in any race so it's it, a special uh, event when it hasn't been in any race there in a while i'm sorry an indie of an indie race would be a very special event there hasn't been one there for a while has there um, no, I mean, they do the traditional, they do the traditional, um, race, uh, they actually do a couple of traditional, it's kind of a standard schedule. Um, this indie announcement is fairly new. It was going to happen this year and it was canceled, postponed. I like to use the word postponed. I don't like using the word because I can't schedule or, or even better reimagined and repurposed. <laughs> so we have, uh, that's all happening and they're planning. I think this would make it a 10 event season coming up in 2021. Okay, so a couple Thanks. other questions unrelated to driving. Are the schooner excursions operating? So one of our boats, the True Love, didn't make it through the canal. They didn't get up from Florida soon enough and couldn't get through the canal. So um, the Navones actually used it. You know, when you can't do, you plan or you fix, right? So they fixed the True Love, which is the, the, the catamaran schooner 
but uh, Captain Bills, good old try and true Captain Bills, has two boats. They have a smaller wooden boat that gives you a little bit more of a nostalgic feel as it does the, the farms and waterfall tours of the lake down on our end. Um, and then the larger boat that Captain Bill is most known for where the meals are and such, that's uh, been operating all summer and will operate. It actually doesn't leave the water um, and he'll do probably through November 1st and probably later. A lot yeah. of people are trying to make up for that slow spring and late winter where they couldn't actually do business. And but yeah, November, Captain Bill's is as popular as ever. Yeah, through November, it's good to know on Captain Bill. That was the second question that one of the viewers had, uh, had asked. Kelly, anything uh, that you see in the chat box? Yes, I do know that when you have to buy the race tickets and things like that, but how fast uh, or how far ahead you have to book the campgrounds and the hotels for the race weekend? Because I know it pretty much starts on like Thursday with the trials or something like that or practice, and then it goes through the weekend. Sure. So how long in advance sure. or far in advance you have to book it? Well, a phenomenon I'll share with you and the viewers that have been nice enough to stay on. Uh, it looks like we haven't lost anyone, actually. So um, we must be keeping them interested. I, I will tell you the phenomenon here is those nine events that we didn't have this year were all backfilled, meaning that we had a whole new audience come and stay with us in Watkins Glen that has never stayed over those nine weekends. And now I'm concerned that when they do open up the dates, now the hotels have experienced some really nice market coming to enjoy our community. Mm -hmm. So traditionally what that means is in the past, those would book up very fast. So Kelly, of course, you know your product and, and Craig's right. alluding to it as well. Those, I mean, some people have been coming for years and years and years and probably have had reservations with the same inns, bed and breakfast, Airbnbs, mm -hmm. vacation rentals, et cetera. And so I would say call now and then talk, you know, look at our website, look at some favorite places that pique your interest and then call now. I mean, it doesn't hurt to be calling about next summer. It's very similar to when you rent a, a picnic pavilion in a park for a family picnic, right? Or a cookout or a reunion is, it's usually a year out. Um, that's pretty true, but keeping in mind the majority of our lodging properties aren't flags. They're not big names. Right. They're mom and pops. They're keeping books. They're not putting it on computer. And so you get written in the book and it's yours, right? So I would encourage if there's a date that you're interested in, I think now the race folks might have a challenge because now the, the nature uh, explorers, the escape tourists, all those fun people that really came and enjoyed our community and a lot of people from Rochester. Uh, we think a lot of people from Rochester came this summer. They were going to come for two days. They stayed three or four. That's right. another phenomenon that we're going to have to get used to is, oh, there's so much down here. We're going to stay three or four days instead of two days. You know, we had a lot of Sunday stays and a lot of Mondays. Um, Sundays and Mondays are great rates down here and that's year round. We, our hotel product is year round, you know, not all of it, but some of it. Uh, and so I would encourage people to call ahead, go on our website, look and see what intrigues you, what kind of style of lodging you want. We have everything. And then uh, call ahead, Wonderful. make friends with mom and pop B&B owner. And, and uh, on a side note, uh, uh, my husband used to own a Ford dealership. So we used to stay in the Ford tent on, I think it was the first term where the, the tent was. And one year they let us drive the brand new Ford Ranger around the track. And I got to drive around the track. It was so exciting. <laughs> I was hoping to do that this year, but I've been so busy starting off. But I know that there's a, there's a driver for around the track for me in the coming up future or in the, the near future, or at least the new the near season future. Yeah, it was the day of the race. We always did. We did it right before the race started. They had um, whoever was a sponsor got a chance to do that. So it was very exciting. I loved it. We, uh, People we, had, really a, enjoyed it. Uh, we had a comment in the chat. Um, someone here went to school with the owner of the True Love, Josh Navone, and they've seen the True Love uh, since it's been refinished and say it's just amazing. Yeah, it's we're very fortunate. It's, it, you, those shots that you see of the marina, and there are several marinas, plus the Shimon Canal, because the Erie Canal feeds down to us. And so we are part of the Erie Canal system. And so the boating culture down here is really fun. I grew up, uh, some people don't know this, but I grew up in Newport, Rhode Island, um, oh, America's okay. first tourist town. And so when I go out and I, you know, I, I've got a farm on one side and then I have a marina on another side and then I have waterfalls behind me and breweries in front of me. I mean, it's just lovely. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's something very unique down here. 